اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Now the quickest and easiest way to see if the respondent abandoned your questionnaire what you need to do is just sort out the last few columns of the data in ascending order hence you could see if the respondent dropped out of the survey and stopped answering the question or rather questions these incomplete rows are subject to deletion if the respondent fail to answer the last few question you just need to determine if this amount of missing data is sufficiently acceptable to retain the respondent's other answers for example he only missed or didn't answer the last one or two questions then there is no point deleting the whole response but what if he missed out on 40 50% of the question of the of the questionnaire so what you need to do is you can actually delete that particular response After making a determination if respondents who fail to complete the survey should be deleted the next thing you need to assess is respondent misconduct let's say you have asked the survey on a likert scale from 1 to 7 you want to assess if the respondent simply marked the same answer for every question the likelihood that the respondent feels the exact same way for every question is small and is subject to deletion because of the respondent's misconduct we do not normally have the same answer for each question so there is bound to be a variation in the responses now if the respondent answers all the question with a similar response there is an a chance or highly likely that this is a misconduct and he did not or she did not actually read the questions sometimes you will also hear a ye saying where the respondent is not reading the questions and just marking the answers or the responses an additional step you can take to assess if the respondent misconduct is taking place is to add attention check measures to your survey now these questions are added simply to make sure the respondent is paying attention to the questions and they may ask the respondent to specifically select a number on 1 to 7 scale for example you may add reverse questions to your questionnaire so this will help you assess the respondent misconduct and keep a check on the respondent as well to see if you have a problem with your data set examining the standard deviation of answers for each specific respondent is a very good way to assess if the respondent misconduct is present now while spss is a great tool to analyzing uh, the standard deviation in spss uh, this is a quite uh, a job Now in order to do this what we will do is we will use excel So what we do is excel is a bit quicker so let's use excel to identify if uh, there is a certain amount of standard deviation Now go to the last column and that is blank and simply input the standard deviation function in excel and highlight only the likert scale items or statements and do not include your id column This will allow you to see the standard deviation of each row for each respondent. Now anything with the standard deviation that is less than 0.25 should be deleted because there is little or no variance among the responses across the survey. Now how do we do this? Let's first do this. Let's say here are my responses. So we go to the last column here and we simply add the function is equal to standard deviation dot p now we select all our like a scale items or questions now this is done and just press enter now in order to extend it to all the responses just select the first function and here just double click this plus sign and see this is extended to all your responses now are there any responses less than 0.25 well i see here let's sort it out so we select this column sort and filter smallest to largest expand the selection yes and see we've got only one that is less than 0.25 this one is greater than 0.25 so this one may be deleted because there is hardly any variance and you can see this yourself as well 
Now moving on. Now saying that, it does not mean that if standard deviation is under 0.25, you need to automatically delete the record. As the researcher, you need to determine what is an acceptable level of agreement or actually disagreement within the question. And this can be a matter of how large or how small the survey is as well. So if it's a large survey or a small survey, the value of standard deviation might change. But this is a rule of thumb. Now there is no golden rule that you can apply to every situation. But if you have a standard deviation of respondent that is less than 0.25, then you need to go to strongly consider if the respondent answers are valid. And then obviously you move forward.